Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly. Oops, let me get it right here. And welcome to 1.52. I don't think we're going all the way to 8, but we'll see how far we get. Um, well, we're going to talk about electron configurations, off-ball diagrams, Coulomb's law, and you need to have your periodic table out, so get it out now. All right, so first of all, you should know protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. This is a very electron-focused world here. All right, so electrons are arranged in clouds about the nucleus. The largest grouping is called an energy level or a shell. You might think of it as being like a ring. Don't ever call it a ring. Rings are a bad word here. Energy level is a shell around the nucleus. The energy level corresponds to the row of the periodic table. D and F are exceptions. D would be minus 1 and F would be minus 2. The energy level is shown by the coefficient in an electron configuration. This is the first energy level. The next letter tells you the shape of the orbital and can be identified on the periodic table. This is spherical. So periodic table, this is the S block with a little helium over here. Helium's a little S. This right here is the D as in dog. This right here is the P as in Paul. Hello. And we have F way down here in the bottom. Okay. The next letter tells you the shape of the orbital and can be identified on the periodic table, which I just drew that on there. S is spherical, P is dumbbell shaped, D and F are, their shape is just called complex. So spherical, boom. dumbbell shaped, I don't think it's very dumbbell shaped, but these guys are definitely complex. Okay, and there's the S, P, D, and F. All right, the next part, this right here, tells you how many electrons are in that subshell. So again, energy level, subshell, block, and then how many, okay? S has two columns, so it holds two electrons at most. It doesn't mean they always have it, but at most two. Could be zero, could be one. Uh, I'm going to cough here, so I'm trying to stop my cough. I'm trying my best to pause. Cough accomplished. Um, so P has six columns that holds six electrons at most. Um, D holds 10, and F holds 14 at most. All right. Examples. So let's do electron configurations of carbon. Okay, so carbon is right here. So I have to represent every one of the six electrons that carbon has. So I'm going to start up here, and these first two, remember, are in the S block. First row, S block, two. Three and four are lithium and beryllium. So remember, one, two, three, four, five. Second row, big two. Now I'm in the S block for these two right here. And then there's two of them. Bam. Now carbon right here is the second one. Still the second row. Now I'm in the P block. See how this is the P? And there's only two of them. And that's carbon. Okay. Argon. I just got to put that back in there and take my deep breath. Argon. My friend, argon. So argon is over here. And argon's number 18. So I'm going to start at the top again. Notice this will be repetitive. 1s2, 2s2, 2s2 is this right here. 2p6, wee! Again, second row, p block, six of them. And why six? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have 3s2, and then 3p6. I want to point out that if I add up my superscripts here, it equals the number of electrons. Hey, how about that? All right. Let's see if we can move them along a little bit. D's and F's have an oddity of the shell is one lower than the periodic table row. So this one you'd think would be four, but it's three. And this one's four, this one's five, this one's six for the rows there. And for the F block, this is four, and this is five. Okay. So I'm looking at titanium. I'm going to do the same thing again. Titanium's number 22. Right, I'm going to run through those. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. So that gets me all the way up to here to calcium. Okay. Now, if I want to do titanium, I've got these two electrons right here. I'm now in the D block, and I was on the fourth row, but now I'm in the third row, and i got to put it two. So let's see if I can pause. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm back from my pause. So Ds and Fs have an oddity of the shell is one lower than the periodic tables row for D and two for F. So titanium we just finished up. 
Remember, it's 3D, so notice how that's one lower than the fourth one. All right, cerium. Whoa, doggies, where is cerium? Bum, 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 looking for C, E. Okay, so cerium is right here. So this is where I copied a periodic table that doesn't quite uh, jive with what we have going on as well. These two things right here actually go up in this spot. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll show you where that comes from. So if you're looking at the periodic table that's given to you by AP Chemistry, that would be a good one to do. So cerium is number 58. So I'm going to start 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Just to show you again what I'm doing here. 1s, ooh, where's my highlighter? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Okay. Then I'm going to do 3s2, 3p6. 3s2, 3p6. Then I, remember, I'm trying to go to number 58. No, oh, no. Then I did 3p6. So now I'm at 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. And then keep going here. 5s2, 4d10, 5p6. Follows the same thing. 6s2, and then it gets weird. Okay. So 6s2. So on this, we've got 55 and 56 are 6s2, okay? Number 57, as weird as it is, is in 5d1. So that's really where it is. This is the oddness of it. 57 is 5d1 and 57 is lanthanum, okay? So that's misplaced if you're looking at the periodic table I think I gave you, okay? So that means I then have 5d1 and then 58, which is cerium, is 4F1. So remember this here, cerium right here, the fourth row, because it follows 55, 56, 57, 58. Doesn't matter what order you do those, but that's kind of where it goes. All right. All right. So shortcut, noble gas notation, also called a core notation. Write the preceding noble gas in brackets and then finish it. So let's take a look at zinc. Zinc is right here, and zinc is number 30. The preceding noble gas, I'll clear off some of this, preceding noble gas is my old friend argon, okay? So that means what I'm going to do is I'm going to write argon in brackets, and then 4s2, 3d10. So what do I do? I put the preceding noble gas, argon, in brackets, 4s2, 3d10. And in case you forgot, and I doubt that you did, but in case you did, the noble gases are this column right here. Poo, uh-oh. We got to look at plutonium. Let's find plutonium. Plutonium's number 94. I want to remind you again that actinium is in the D block, okay? So, uh, preceding noble gas for poo number 93 is xenon. Which, let me make sure I got that right. So, poo is number 94. So, it's, sorry, it's radon. My bad. It's radon. So, I've got number 86 radon. So, I have radon is 86. Oops. Let me erase that and try it again. Radon is number 86. And then 87 and 88 would be 7s2. 89 is actinium which is 6D1, this would be actinium, just so you know. And then I'm looking at, at plutonium. So I've got thorium, palladium, uranium, neptunium, polonium. One, two, three, four, five. This would be five, F, five. All right, so why electron configurations work as they do? Now you don't need to know the names, but you need to know the importance of it. So start at the lowest energy level. So they want to be the lowest energy they can be. Electrons spread out, Hund's rule. So if I have a P, so if I have orbitals like this, I have P, the electrons will spread out and not be right next to each other. The Pauli exclusion principle says only two electrons can fit in an orbital. So I could put this, but I can't put three. Okay, so let's take a looky. So this is best seen in an orbital diagram. So if I have aluminum, 
Sometimes these are shown up in greasing like this. Sometimes they're just written across, okay? So notice aluminum has 13 electrons, so I'll fill it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See how I spread it out? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay? So notice how I put those in order and spread them out as they went. Started at the bottom, 1s, and notice how we start up here, which is 1s. Vanadium. Oh, my goodness gracious. Vanadium is number 23. So sometimes it's easier if you're good at your electron configurations is to write out the electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d. Uh, vanadium is 3. Okay, that's one way to do it, and then I'm going to fill it in with that. Or if I know I have 23 electrons, I just start going 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice how P is spread out. 5, 6, 7, up, up, up. 8, 9, 10, down, down, down. 1, 11, 12. I lost track of where I am, but I know I'm stopping at 3D3. 1, 2, 3. Notice these must be single. Must be single. Right, they're spread out as far as they can. All right. Note four S comes before three D. Um, valence electrons are the outermost S and P electrons. Outermost S and P electrons. So they have the biggest coefficients. Okay. Um, electrons are involved in bonding, so these are the ones we care about. D block elements all have two valence electrons because they are S two. Okay. Ionization energy is the energy to remove a valence electron from a gaseous atom, and that's where we'll end and start it off next time. So to that, I'll say toodles. <laughs>